righty. Puna, how's it going, brother? Big, big fight week. How's the diet looking for this one? Great. Uh, woke up at 181 today, kind of chilling. Um, it's funny. It's uh, I've been saying it was harder to maintain that bigger frame than it's been to get down here. Why do you think that is? I think I'm just not a bigger, like, I'm not a bigger body. I thought I was. All my friends are. Um, so I thought I was a middleweight. And um, I figured out I'm not. At, at what point did that sort of click? Like, did, did someone specifically come up to you and say, hey, maybe we should try this out? Or was it something that you figured out on your own? I've always kind of had the idea that I was a uh, welterweight, but I just never thought I could make it, to be honest. Uh, there's a few fights. I would weigh in at 185, and like one fight in particular, weighed in at 185 fight day, I was 186. So I was like, oh, there's no way. But most of the time, I'm 190 or under, like tiny, tiny for middleweight. Was that a recent fight? Basically all. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, your opponent, he's had some time off, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, what do you make of that? Do you think he's – do you believe in ring rust? Do you think there's going to be anything like that when he walks in there? No, I don't believe in ring rust. Um, I think he'll be sharp, dangerous as ever, probably more dangerous. Um we're in similar situations, and I understand the mindset I was in for this camp, so I assume he was kind of in that same mindset, so I expect the most dangerous Miguel. Do you think the power is going to carry at 170? Oh, I think so. I, I really hope so. Um, I felt just as strong throughout the whole camp, um, and I, yeah, I actually feel even better. Um, according to the PI, I got stronger somehow. And how is, like, how has the mental health been? Because I know you, you, went, you got off to a hot start in the UFC. You've had some ups and downs. What is that like dealing with that on a personal level? For sure. Um, you know, just growing every day. Um, been working with a sports psychologist at the PI has really helped me. Um, just kind of put things into perspective, uh, you know, organize my life. And I feel like... Just I'm cutting out the BS. I'm cutting out the negative thoughts, cutting out, like, I don't know, all the stuff I don't need to see and just only looking at what's going to benefit me. How's the married life? Oh, it's the best. Uh, she's my best friend. Um, hang out with her every day. I don't really hang out with anyone else. I just, after training, I look forward to going home and hanging out with her and my pups. And, yeah. And, um how big of a help has, has Coach Eric been? Because I see, I mean, a lot of the videos you post on Instagram, you see him helping you out, talking to you, hitting the pads. How big an influence, how big a help has he been to you? Yeah, man, he's been he's been a big influence on me. Um, not just him, all my coaches, Maki Patolo back there, um, Nate Pettit, um, they've all helped me so much throughout camp, um, outside of camp. One thing that really helped me with Eric was like uh, – after my last fight, he, we just kind of broke it down. He was completely honest, and he said, you know, this next fight is, is do or die. We're fighting for a career, and he said we should all, even as coaches, be thinking that for you. Like, you know, um, we're all do or die here. What is that like pressure-wise, knowing like, hey, my job is potentially on the line right now? Weirdly, no added pressure. Um, I, I think it's the help of Micah, my sports psychologist, but uh, – I feel no added pressure. I just feel ready to go out there and perform at my best. And like you said with the with the sports psychologist, what do you think were some of the keys that you guys came up with to getting back to where you were when you were knocking guys out? <clears throat> like I said, I think just um, staying focused in the right directions, um, not letting myself spiral, reading negative comments, hearing negative stuff from people. Um, just only listening to what matters, I guess. That's that's interesting because, I mean, you see a guy like Ian Gary who turns off his comments. He, mm -hmm. He's gone so far as to say, like, hey, I, I don't even look at my social media. I have people running that. Was there a point in your career where you were reading sort of the negative comments? and, and Yeah, 100%. I was, like, I felt like I was addicted. I couldn't, like, look away from it. Um, just I wanted to see every comment. And it, a lot of it was, like, I was scared for my family to see it. I didn't want them to get involved. Like some guy says, oh, you're a dickhead, whatever, blah, blah, blah. 
And then, like, my family, my friends kind of jump on them. Like, I don't want them to get into that. But, um, yeah, I kind of just stopped caring. I put screens in on my phone, limits me from Instagram and whatever else I want. And it's been real helpful. Last one for me. How do you get the victory? Um, any way possible, you know. I'm, I'm going out there to fight, going out there to win. I'm going to put the pace on him, and I'm just going to try as hard as I can to, to beat this guy. Thank you.